All right, take three. Hello everybody and welcome to the DIY Homefront channel. Today we're going to be working on replacing the battery in my 2011 Honda Sonata. About two weeks ago I went to start it up to go someplace and it didn't even have enough juice to turn over the starter motor. It didn't even click. So I hooked it up to a battery charger, waited for a day for the battery charger to be green, disconnected it, and ran some errands in town, and then parked the car. And then about two days later, I came out to check it, and it wouldn't start again. So, dead battery. The battery's about five years old, so that's about the normal life you're gonna get out of, uh, out of a replacement battery. So I'll show you the um, charger I use and show you how to swap out a battery. So here we are at the workbench or the back of my pickup truck. And this is the battery charger I use. It's not a very big one. Normally I'm using it to keep the batteries on the lawnmower charged. It works just fine. It's just not really fast, especially on a car battery. But I left it up plugged up overnight and it did the job. I'll have to unravel the cables. A couple years ago I had a vacuum cleaner that died that had like a 25 foot power cord. So I disassembled this and uh, swapped out the power cord. So I didn't have to use an extension cord every time I wanted to use it in the barn to charge up the lawn mowers. So give me a second and I'll unwind this. And there you have it. That's a pretty long cord. In the barn, I don't have to worry about a uh, an extension cord or anything like that. And I've just got some regular leads. That's where I hang the battery charger. And it's pretty easy with the Hyundai. I mean, you can't go wrong. The uh, positive terminal's got a big red plus on it. Normally I hook up the negative side first. And then the positive side. And then let it charge. Like I said, I did that for a day. I came out, started it up and took it to town. And then a couple of days later it was dead again. I just noticed that. Poor guy must have got shut in the in the hood whenever I closed it. So, like I said, that's easy enough. Now you know how to use the uh, charger. Hook the positive to positive and negative to negative and let it go. So let's get the battery out. Years ago when I did this the first time, I had a dickens of a time trying to get down in to where the bolt is. And I realized it was easier just to take this big old cover out of the way. So let's get that out. It's got these uh, little screws and they will just spin and spin and spin. The trick is to hold the base and make the little plastic screw come up. There we go and just pop them on out. And this piece just literally lifts up and out of the way and now got plenty of room to get down there move around and get the bolt out that should be a uh, 12 millimeter socket yep 12 millimeter let me undo that be careful not to drop stuff you can get to it but man it can be a pain in the butt especially the cars that have the plastic cover on the bottom to help uh, with the aerodynamics you have to jack the car up and take that plastic cover off if you want to get to anything now let's get these two off and that is a 10 millimeter when you're doing this make sure you don't accidentally touch the positive to the negative side because it will short the battery out and then you will see sparks and it can really surprise you. That one's loose. And that one's loose. I always take the positive side off first. I don't know why, but I do. And then the negative. There we go. Battery slides out. This battery has a protective cover on it. It comes off. Not 
not sure what it does. I guess maybe it keeps from getting cold and the battery comes out. So the new battery goes in. Oh, let me get that plastic cover on it. And it goes on only one way. That's for where the terminal is and that's where the catch is that holds the battery in place. clip that goes in on the bottom there's a groove in the bottom of the battery that this clip gets in and holds I guess I could have shown that Snug it, but don't strip it. And last but not least, the plastic cover that comes out. The little pieces have uh, fanned out, so you might have to push them together to get them to go back in. Yeah, the first time I tried to do this, I didn't take this cover off, and I wrestled and wrestled and wrestled trying to, to get that out. All right, should be the moment of truth. Let's see if it starts. Well, already there's a good sign. I can see that the start plug is glowing. On the count of three. One, two, three. Guess I gotta push the brake first. We have contact. Probably the only, uh, let me turn this off. Oh, there you go. Alrighty, so the car starts up. So I think we got it fixed. The bad part is the entertainment center has got to be reprogrammed. The time and all the radio stations, I'll have to go back and put that back in. But swapping out the battery is not that hard. If you're worried about the battery being dead or not, you could always take it to the, to the parts store. And almost all of them have a battery tester. You can take it in there and they'll tell you if it's bad or not. But I swapped it out because it's five years old. And I tested it with the battery charger, so I know it's not that. Well, that's going to conclude this episode of the DIY Homefront. I appreciate you watching. Like always, please like and subscribe. I never know what I'm going to be doing next. <laughs>